for humanity. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. As-salatu as-salam ala Muhammad Rasulullah wa la alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. Ash-shara wa la ilaha illa Allah wa tu la shalikullah. Ash-shadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. I bear witness that there is nothing or no one in this entire universe is worthy of worship with the exception of Allah. He has no partners, he has no associates. He has no ancestors, he has no descendants. Almighty Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal has no mother, no father, no daughter, no wife, and certainly no son. He rules the universe alone. And I bear witness that Muhammad ibn Abdullah, prayers and peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. It is with these testimonies that I offer my beloved brothers and sisters a dua of assalamu alaikum. May Allah forgive us and help us. May Allah strengthen us. I pray to him that he will guide my heart and guard my tongue and grant me the best words, the best speech, the best spirit, and the best tone to bring a message beneficial to all of us, clear and convincing, and draw all of us closer to him and more loyal to the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his final messenger. Dear beloved brothers and sisters, Almighty Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala azawajal created us for one reason and one reason only, to worship him. Worshiping Allah comes in different aspects. We worship Allah through our prayer. We worship Allah through our good deeds that we do. We worship Allah by enjoining what is right, forbidding what is wrong. We worship Allah by getting married and having families. We worship Allah by removing dangerous things from the road. Brothers and sisters, the most powerful worship of Allah, of course, is Tawbah, but the most effective possession that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to have. The most effective possession that would help us to ensure us real success in this life and any hope of success in the afterlife. The most effective possession, brothers and sisters, is not our kufi caps or turbans or jilbabs or khimars or hijabs or sandals none of those superficial things. The most effective possession, brothers and sisters, is not any of the clothing that we may choose to wear, our thobes and so forth. The most effective possession, brothers and sisters, is something that is intangible, something that we cannot reach out and touch with our hands, but yet is something that Allah allows us to own if we care for it, if we carefully guard it. The most effective possession, brothers and sisters, that Almighty Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to have and actually he allows us to assume ownership of by his permission is something that we cannot see with our eyes. Although our eyes respond to this possession, the most effective possession, brothers and sisters, is not what we can hear with our ears, although our ears respond to this possession. The most effective possession, brothers and sisters, is not what we can say with our lips and our tongue, although our lips and our tongue and our vocal cords respond to this very effective possession. 
No, brothers and sisters, the most effective possession that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us out of his mercy to own is not our hands. Although our hands and what we touch and carry are affected by this possession. It's not our feet, although our feet are affected because we go places in response to what we may be experiencing by this possession. My beloved brothers and sisters, the most effective possession that the human being has, the most effective possession that the believer, the slave of Allah has, is our obedience. You see, our obedience, once we have ownership of obedience by the grace and mercy of Allah, he allows us to own obedience, but you cannot assume ownership of obedience unless this is a desire in us. We have to have a desire in us, brothers and sisters, to actually own obedience, to actually assume obedience. You have to want it. It's nothing that you inherit. You cannot inherit obedience. Of course, we inherit limited obedience in the operation of our physical bodies. That is not conscious obedience. That is subconscious obedience. Everybody and every being, every living being on this earth has subconscious obedience. That is the obedience that Almighty Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala put in, in our being which is called our subconscious makeup. Our subconscious makeup is that part within us that is a gift from Allah that he causes to operate, he uses it to operate our bodies without our control because he knows out of his mercy that we're not capable of handling all the intricate construction and all the intricate mechanisms that operate our body it's too much for us to consciously think about. It's too much for us to think about how our heart beats and takes blood in and takes blood out. And too much for us to think about how our lungs breathe in and out. Too much for us to think about how our spleen and our liver and our pancreas and our gallbladder and all these other organs within our body operate. It's too much for us to think about how fast our hair should grow and how fast or how long our nails should grow. It's too much for us to think about. So out of his mercy, he has given us a subconscious makeup that operates our bodies, operates our being. And he has ordered our subconscious makeup to obey him. So it has obedience that it experiences. We don't have to think about that. We don't have to think about that level of obedience. But brothers and sisters, the deliberate and conscious obedience is the type of obedience that we possess when we submit to Allah consciously when we submit to the commandments of Allah the conscious obedience when we deliberately and consciously with religious rationale obey Allah deliberately and we fall in total compliance 100% compliance to his commandments. That is the obedience that strengthens us. And I'm not talking about physical brute strength. I'm talking about spiritual strength, moral strength. That when we have obedience, when we realize that we have gained the possession of obedience, that is the most effective possession that we have. And that obedience to Almighty Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala that obedience, that submission to his will is the type of obedience that helps us to be successful in many ways. The obedience to Allah when it comes to responding to our nature, the nature in which we have been created. We have all been created with the nature to submit to the will of Allah. That is the basic fundamental meaning of Muslim. One who has the nature to Submit to the will of Allah. And Allah says in the Quran, he says, we have named you Muslim both before and in this revelation. Now, once we submit to that nature to submit to the will of Allah, once we consciously accept 
that Almighty Allah is the only being that's worthy of worship, worthy of our obeisance, worthy of the true faith, because he is El Haq. Once we accept that, stay right there. Don't go away. We'll be right back, inshallah, after a short break. Welcome back. We're glad you stayed tuned. Let's continue with strengthening your iman. Then we fall into the category of those who are struggling every day, and it can be a struggle to obey him and fall in complete obedience to Allah. So this obedience to Allah also takes different forms. Obedience to Allah can be our weapon against shaitan. Rather, it will be our weapon against shaitan. Obedience to Allah is a weapon against shaitan. Obedience to Allah is a tool to accomplish things that not only we and our families benefit from, but it also becomes a tool that the community, the outer community, society, humanity can benefit from. It becomes a tool and it becomes a weapon simultaneously. The only weapon that we could possibly use to fight shaitan and his wiggling finger of temptation is obedience to Allah. You see, we cannot use something physical to fight shaitan. I remember when I was a young boy, before I heard about Islam and my parents used to take me to the church and teach me about the devil and how the devil tried to always tempt people to do wrong. I used to dream at night that I could be in a fight with the devil and I had weapons, swords and sticks and stones and trying to fight the devil physically with physical weapons. I grew up thinking that that was the best way to fight the devil. But when Allah blessed me to embrace Islam, I realized that the devil, Satan, or shaitan, in the Arabic language, shaitan, cannot be defeated with physical weapons. The best weapon against shaitan, the best weapon against this enemy, this evil one, who has made a vow, a promise, an oath to Allah to continue making an effort to lead us astray, to lead us into the hellfire with him. The best weapon to use against him, in fact, the only effective weapon against shaitan in all of the things that he invites us to do is obedience, clear and simple. It doesn't take a complicated formula, a complicated recipe to figure out how to defeat this devil, which is afflicting humanity, afflicting society. People are making horrible decisions because of the influence of shaitan in their lives. People are breaking up families because of the influence of shaitan in their lives. People are causing harm to other people, killing and maiming people. Poor people are being ignored and caused to suffer and die because of the influence of shaitan in their lives. They're not using that weapon. It's like they have it sheathed, like it's a sheathed sword, like obedience is something they only take off the shelf when it's convenient for them. But obedience to Allah is a weapon that we should keep with us constantly. And we keep that weapon of obedience sharp by honing it with worship, dhikr to Allah, by keeping it sharp this weapon of obedience with constant remembrance, a constant attitude of tawbah and taqwa, subhanAllah. So this weapon against shaitan is the only effective weapon that has an impact on his influence in the lives of people. There are wars being fought right now. Innocent people die. The majority of the wars that are being fought are causing more death and destruction to non-combatants than even to the soldiers on the battlefield. In countries throughout the world where obedience to Allah is being totally neglected by those in leadership positions and positions of authority. There are people who make decisions to go to war against countries, go to war against societies because they fail to be obedient to Allah. They're not using the weapon of obedience. They would rather use the weapon of destruction. Weapons of mass destruction or destroying humanity. 
guns and bombs and missiles and planes, killing innocent people because people in a position of influence and power are not using the weapon that needs to be used in order to bring about world peace. Historically, killing people has never brought about peace. It only brought about more killing. Strengthening families has never taken place by breaking up families. How can we assume that making our life better comes from breaking up a family? Families break up every day. Thousands of family being fragmented and breaking apart because they think that if they break up, their lives will be better. That is not in obedience to Allah. Obedience to Allah is to build families and strengthen families and, and put a bond between families. That's obedience to Allah. Prisons are being built every day, especially in certain countries. They spend billions of dollars building prisons to house prisoners who break laws because they not only disobey the law, but they're in disobedience to the God that created them. Laws are being broken. Not just laws of the land, but the laws of Almighty God are being broken and people don't see the importance of obeying Allah. And many people have the misinterpretation of true meaning of what success is. Many people attain material and financial success by spending their lives in disobedience to Allah. And so they have a misinterpreted shallow understanding of what real success is, disobeying Allah. When children are born, they're born with a perfect attitude of honesty. Did you ever notice that when you ever ask a small child a question, that that child will answer it so honestly that it's almost embarrassing? And then as a result of the environment that we place them in, we begin to teach them how to lie, teach them how to deceive people because they are learning how to disobey Almighty Allah. So this weapon of disobedience, the weapon against destruction, the weapon against crime, the weapon against immorality, the weapon against violence, this weapon of obedience to Allah needs to be possessed by all of us who are walking this planet Earth. But we have to learn how to effectively use this weapon, how to obey Allah, how to become those who are in obedience to Allah, 100% compliance with the commands of Allah, the most effective possession. And we know that we are in compliance with the command of Allah because we begin to experience that success. We begin to see our lives being transformed into those who have been enjoying the true success, the true falah, falah al haq the true success, the reality, the yaqeen, the haqa yaqeen wa falah, the true certainty of real success. We can experience that, brothers and sisters, if we make an effort to gain possession over obedience. You know, when we have material possessions, we safeguard them. We lock them down. In this series, which is entitled Safeguarding Our Iman, the only way to truly safeguard our Iman is to safeguard all of the possessions that are part of our Iman. And the most effective possession that is part of our Iman, brothers and sisters, is our obedience to Allah. This obedience to Allah not only is an effective weapon against shaitan, not only is an effective weapon against morality and all those things that shaitan invites us to, but this obedience to Allah, this possession of obedience to Allah is also a tool. Not just a weapon, but it's a tool. This tool that we utilize to build our character, this tool of obedience that we use to build a strong character and help us all once we focus on 
increasing the power of this tool called obedience to Allah, it helps us all, once we focus on it, rise to the excellence of our human potential. The human potential that is in all of us that Allah has placed there that only he really knows for sure. Only Allah knows our human potential. But we can rise to that level if we safeguard our obedience to Allah. When a person accepts Islam wholeheartedly, we are obligated to pray five times a day at exact calculated timings. That's obedience to Allah. That's how we approach the success for life. When we accept Islam, we're obligated to give a portion, a small portion of our material wealth to those in need. That's obedience to Allah. Allah tells us in the Quran to be kind to the wayfarers, be nice to people who have less, because that could be us and we could be them. That is obedience to Allah. Allah says in the Quran to obey Allah and follow his messenger. Obedience to Allah is to try to imitate the character of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's not just a good idea. That's not just a suggestion. That's a commandment and also a recipe for success because imitating Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in every way we can is obedience to Allah. So my dear brothers and sisters, Let's focus on doing everything we can to increase our obedience to Allah. Follow Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and help each other. Let's remind each other so that we can hope to achieve true success as it is perceived by Almighty Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kuli kali hadha astaghfirullah la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.